Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Friday, February 2nd. Okay, so we have the moon in Scorpio all day. We're actually building towards the last quarter moon in Scorpio energy, which of course is a revelation point. It is a processing point. We have to really take a good look back over this lunar cycle, taking us all the way back to January 11th, the new moon in Capricorn energy, where we anchored in this new version of self. We anchored in new timelines. We anchored in new karmic contracts. Of course, we went all the way into the full moon in Leo energy, where we had a major change of heart, major revelations. Really, it was about releasing a lot of the fragmented energy that belonged to the old version of self and the old circumstances in realm and reality that the old version of self had created in order for us to have the space to change, to adjust, to tap into this new version of self and understand where it is that the soul, the spirit, the energy, the mood, the attitude now wants to take over, now wants to take that leadership role and definitely be expressed to the fullest potential. Now, in this last quarter moon. Again, we look back, we process what is going to stay, what is going to go. We've had some revelations, some aha moments, some changes in our mind space, in our heart space, and therefore we have to change our inner realm. That Scorpio energy, a fixed water sign, takes us through the emotional realm, takes us through the spiritual realm, and understands where it is that we have to release the fragmented parts of self, really examining the fears, the doubts, the insecurities, blocking us from truly aligning with this new vision, with this new goal, with this new dream. In true Scorpio fashion, whatever it is that we are kind of examining as fears, doubts, and insecurities, we can flip the script, really change it into something a little bit more powerful. And anything left over as far as these, you know, little fragments of self, we get to merge them together back into a state of wholeness, back into a state of power, which of course triggers the domino effect that we're now moving into. We are in an accelerated time period where things are going to start popping off here very quickly, especially after that new moon in Aquarius. If you have not listened to February's energy forecast, I'm going to recommend you do that. If you haven't downloaded your Zodiac forecast for the month, I'm going to recommend you do that as well. I'm going to set the scene, kind of give you the overview of what it is that we can expect to take place here in February. And because this last quarter moon in Scorpio is definitely triggering, activating a change within our soul, our spirit, we are starting to see where it is that our heart will soon align with our headspace. And when those two are in agreement, we're going to be able to engage the physical body and take action, make moves in our physical realm to start kind of rearranging, reorganizing our physical realms to start mirroring back to us what it is that we've already kind of created, what it is that we've already visualized in our inner realm. So, you know, building towards any type of especially lunar event means that our emotions are definitely going to be pressurized. There is an intensity. We have to reach a certain, I'm going to call it boiling point in order for a new awareness within ourselves to actually come out of our unconscious selves and come into our awareness where again, we can start working with it, processing it and change it into something motivating, inspiring, and really add a totally different fuel to the fire that's going to kind of propel us through this particular adjustment period. So with that being said, we have 10 different aspects taking place here today. Eight of them are going to involve the moon. Before we actually even get into any moon activities, we're going to see Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire, even our anger. Uh, Mars co-rules over the Scorpio energy, so there's a little bit of a stronger intensity with this particular interaction. Mars is going to semi-square, creating tension, creating conflict with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who, of course, is in Pisces energy. This particular energy I'm going to call quicksand energy, meaning we find ourselves stuck. We find ourselves kind of facing obstacles, facing challenges, if you will. And the impulse initially is for us to take action, make moves and go fast, trying to get over it, trying to go around it, coming up with the alternative path. What we really need to do is slow the F down. We're in quicksand, right? The faster you move, the faster you're going to sink. The whole point of quicksand 
is to stay as still as possible. Again, people really struggling with this pause energy that we're in. We need to be patient. We need to be still. The more you hurry, the more you race, the more you push for changes, for transformations to take place, the more resistance you're going to end up kind of bumping into. So does this feel good? No. Is it supposed to feel good? Absolutely not. Are we supposed to learn something from this? Yes, we sure are. And that is to understand energy management. When it is that we need to push, when it is that we need to slow down, where it is that we need to assert ourselves, again, Mars energy, and where it is that we need to step back and just observe, again, Pisces energy. That Saturn energy wants us to learn tough love life lessons. And there is no way, there's no better way to learn how to get your ass out of a quicksand situation than to just stay still. Just kind of keep yourself calm. Become very one and very present in your physical form. Understanding where it is that your physical body has an impulse. It's a coding. It's a program to constantly be asserting oneself forward, constantly be breaking down obstacles and challenges. But the key is to understand that we are in a pause situation, which requires us to stay still. So this is going to be a very good test, I'm going to say, uh, for our patients. It's also going to be a good test to see how much control you actually have over your thoughts, over your emotions, over your physical body. Again, your body has a certain programming that goes right against your higher self. And so we have to be very mindful of what the physical form coding is actually trying to get us to do. Because again, the evil entities here would like to see us drown in quicksand. So we have to kind of slow things up a bit. We have to realize the programming, the coding that is taking place at this moment. And we have to align with our higher selves acting as the observer to see it very clearly and do what we need to do to override the programming. Okay, so the moon in Scorpio is then going to try beautiful interaction with Saturn. So we love this because the Pisces energy that Saturn's in, the Scorpio energy that the moon is in, that's water on water action. This is what gives us our trine. It's a harmonizing, cooperative type of energy. It's leading to, first of all, cleansing our soul and our spirit, turning the volume up on our intuition, on our psychic abilities, on our ability to kind of read between the lines, so to speak. It is very healing, very regenerative. It is very much renewing our soul, our spirit, our higher self, and downloading us again with a reminder of the vision, the goal, the dream that we now want to start building towards. Again, we need to make a major change, major transformation in our inner realm first and foremost before we're going to see those particular outcomes in our external realm. So Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in this Capricorn energy is going to sextile beautiful interaction with Neptune in Pisces energy. So I love this because first of all, Neptune and Mercury working together means that our intuition and our intellect are blending together in order to provide us with different visuals, different ideas, different epiphanies, different revelations. I really like the fact that the Capricorn energy, which is the manifesting energy of the Zodiac, and the Pisces energy, which is essentially the glimmer of creative force energy that we get downloaded with, with vision, with insight, working together in order for us to be able to have something tangible come out of the insights, the downloads that we're currently piecing together. So this is going to kind of mix us up a bit, stir us up, especially where imagination is concerned. We need to tap into imagination before we can actually manifest because we need to have a visual and back it up with an emotion before we're actually going to be able to bring it to life. And so with this kind of new creative force energy coming in, with these new downloads coming in, with a sense of knowing, with this, I'm going to say, volume turned up on our higher selves, on our intuition, on our psychic abilities, we're definitely going to be tapping into different aha moments, different understandings that will provide us with the clarity that we've currently been lacking. This is likely going to inspire us, motivate us, put us in a different situation to see things from a different set of eyes. And therefore, we are not only relying 
on the logical, practical, physical realm that, of course, Mercury rules over, we are also tapping into the subtle energies. We're reading between the lines. We're picking up on thoughts and feelings that aren't materialized as of yet. And so this is a beautiful energy for us to kind of remind ourselves where we need to get into alignment with our higher selves, trusting our intuition, trusting the insights coming in, even if there's not actual proof, evidence, and facts to be knowing or feeling such things. So the moon in Scorpio is then going to sit across from directly oppose Jupiter. So Jupiter's the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings. He's in Taurus energy. Taurus energy, Scorpio energy sits across from each other in the zodiac wheel. This is the give and take axis. This is the death and rebirth axis. This is the destruction and the creation aspect. And we are definitely feeling at this particular point, very overwhelmed with the choices, with the options that we are currently trying to sort through as far as what our path, our plan actually is going to be. Again, reminder, Jupiter in this Taurus energy is a very low and slow burn when it comes to us realizing what it is that we wanna change in our physical realms, and more importantly, the options and opportunities that we now have to create something new that is going to be around for the long term, providing us with happiness, joy, safety, security, and stability. The moon in Scorpio energy needs to collapse some of these not so nice thoughts and feelings that come out of an opposition. And so we aren't really feeling that tickety-boo when it comes to contemplating options and opportunities. We're not really feeling confident. We're not really feeling optimistic at this particular point. And again, reminder, the whole point of the moon in Scorpio is to unearth the fears, the doubts, the insecurities, the not so nice thoughts, the not so nice feelings. We're gonna flip the script on them. We're gonna build them up into something powerful. This is our opportunity to understand where it is that we aren't optimistic, we aren't confident, we aren't really in alignment with what it is that we want to build, what it is that we want to create for the long term. And so when we sit in that confusion, when we sit in those fears, doubts and insecurities, you best believe that we're going to flip the switch, flip the script and start building something good out of these not so nice thoughts, feelings and realizations. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Mars. And again, Mars co-rules over the Scorpio energy. So this interaction is going to be a little bit more intense than any other type of interaction would be. Um, we are seeing a build up. Now, again, reminder, uh, we're trying to cultivate an inspiring, motivated, determined, passionate, desirable path. We, with this Mars energy, especially in Capricorn energy, we are trying to think long term. We are trying to think about all the possible scenarios, all the possible variables, all of the actions that we could be deliberately taking in order to gain a closer proximity to the long term vision, the long term goals that we now want to start building and bringing to life. This particular energy, the moon in Scorpio, Mars in this Capricorn energy, this is about growth. This is about building. Think about the Scorpio energy, a water sign, Capricorn energy, an earth sign. When you water earth, something grows, right? So we're in this cultivation mode of trying to grow in our inspiration, trying to grow in our motivation, trying to grow in our determination in order to stay the course, stay the path, and actually see these long-term visions actually begin to manifest. This is definitely going to put some pep in our step, but again, we're in quicksand, so we don't want to take action. We just want to stay still. We want to formulate a plan to get out of this quicksand, and we want to build ourselves up in confidence, in inspiration, in motivation, in determination, in order to stay the course so that we don't get kind of swallowed up by this quicksand pit. The moon is then going to interact with Neptune in this Pisces energy. It is an awkward interaction, so we're not getting as much growth and healing and repairment as we would prefer to get out of a really strong interaction. But this still is a water on water type of aspect, which means that we're, we may be sitting in some confusion. We may be sitting in our, let's call it la la land state, not really knowing how we're going to bring certain things to life, not really knowing how we're going to get from A to B. But at the same time, our intuition is getting jacked up. And we are kind of approaching here very soon this last quarter moon, which means our emotions are building to a pop off boiling point in order for a new realization, a new emotional awareness to finally come into our perspective.
So emotionally speaking, we may feel all over the place. We may feel overwhelmed. We may feel overstimulated with the outside world. Again, it's time to kind of test yourself to see how much control you have over your emotions, over your mental plane, and of course, over your physical body as well. So the moon is then going to sextile beautiful interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in this Capricorn energy, trying to take a very serious, somber, business-minded approach to her heart space, to her affections, to her wants, needs, and desires, especially thinking about the long term. We've had a change of heart. We've had a change of perspective. We are still sitting in the situation and circumstances that we are looking to get out of. We don't know how to do that as of yet. That's okay. We are still cultivating the inner realm energy needed in order to be in alignment when we're gifted with the green light. Go ahead to actually take action and make moves. Again, Scorpio energy, Capricorn energy. When you water earth, something will grow. So emotionally speaking, we're watering our new change of heart, our new wants, needs, and desires. We're really sitting in the emotional realm. We're realizing what has to change, who needs to stay, who needs to go, what needs to stay, what needs to go in order for us to be weeding out the aspects that we do not want to take with us in the long-term vision, goal, and dream. We want to be thinking about that greater, grander vision that we're trying to kind of build towards. And we are going to act Actively in our mind space, in our heart space, be focusing in on the details of the situation and circumstance that we want to manifest. And from that, be very aware of, again, the processing that we need to be going through in order to weed things out, to create the space for new elements to be born into that will be lasting the very long time when we're thinking about our long-term goals. So 6.18 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The moon in Scorpio going to get into the boxing ring, square off with the sun in Aquarius energy. Now we have water energy and air energy. And even more than that, the commonality is that they're both fixed signs. Fixed signs are about stabilizing. And right now feeling stable would really be nice, but we are building towards that. Now the build up again to the last quarter moon of any lunar phase is a revelation point. It's an aha moment point, realizing what needs to change, where, realizing where adjustments are needed, realizing the information that has come at us, what we're going to do with it, especially reflecting back again to the new moon in Capricorn, January 11th. So does this feel good? No. Is it supposed to? No. Is it very informative and therefore puts us in a different position, different perspective, different path? Absolutely, yes. And again, anytime we have an interaction between the moon and the sun, there is a new aha moment, a new awareness coming into the, I'm going to say, right in our face type of focus so that now we can start kind of unpacking, releasing, surrendering, letting go of the aspects that we've now identified aren't really in alignment with us. And by the time we do that, we will be moving into the new moon energy. So again, another reason to take a listen to the February energy forecast and your zodiac forecast so that you know where these particular events will be taking place in your life. But this particular energy is definitely going to be an aha moment on what needs to change, what needs to shift, what we need to do better, what we have to approve upon. The moon is then going to interact with Mercury in the Capricorn energy. We love this. Why? Because the moon is our heart space. Mercury is our head space. They're getting along. They're on the same page. We're in agreement. We're in an alignment. And especially seeing as the Scorpio water energy and Capricorn earth energy are working well together, there is growth. There's growth in our emotions. There's growth in our ideas. They're getting on the same page. We're getting in alignment. So soon we're going to be able to engage the physical body in order to actually see something new come into form. The moon is then going to make a tough interaction with Chiron and this is going to wrap up the day and it's not such a good vibe. Uh, the reason being is, of course, we just had this this breaking point, let's say this new revelation point, this new epiphany point under that last quarter moon pressure. We just had our heart and our head be on agreement. What happens when we grow? What happens when we heal? What happens when we make some progress? 
is that dark forest energy comes back, tries to pull us back into a state of paralysis. So the moon and Scorpio making this very tough interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer in this Aries energy, really helping us with this shift in identity, this rebranding, if you will, this new identity that we're trying to anchor in, that we're trying to get comfortable in. We are not feeling good about it. We're not feeling good about ourselves. We're starting to beat ourselves up, break ourselves down. Just when we got in alignment, now there's these energies popping up, reminding us of our fears, our doubts, our insecurities. What are we doing with fears, doubts, and insecurities under the moon in Scorpio? We're examining them and we're challenging ourselves to kind of override that script, override that programming and make those experiences, those thoughts, those emotions, those memories into a fuel into a source energy that we are going to use to empower us to make the change, to make the transformations in our inner realm that need to happen first and foremost before we're going to see the changes take place in our external realm.